Okay, this is End Yaws Church, E-N-D-Y-A-W-S-C-H-U-R-C-H at gmail.com, endyawschurch at gmail.com. This program is copyrighted by Richard Paul Hobbs at gmail.com. Contact us for any permission to use any part of this in any way in which you're going to make a profit or someone's going to profit or charge or but benefit financially. If you want to share this or share our beliefs with others and show things you can, if you're going to use this to ridicule us or mock us, then you do not have permission to use it. Um, we don't mind you being critical and uh, arguing or d debating with us over what we believe, but we do mind you using us to to uh, make fun of us. That's not godly. It's not right. It's not humane. It's not kind and uh, um, it's just you thinking you're better than we are and we don't think we're better than you we'll never think that in fact we know what we are the problem is that you don't realize how awful and terrible you are and we realize how awful and terrible we are even though most of the things that will be said against us are not true we know that we're much more wicked than anything they could say because we're our liar and every liar deserves to go to hell that's what the Bible says, and if the Bible doesn't say it, that's what the world says. And we're a church, the name of our church is End Yaws Church, because there's a disease on the earth called Yaws. And it by itself alone proves that for the most part, most of the churches that call themselves Christian churches are not at all Christian. They're just little businesses that people have set up to make money off of you by telling you how to believe in God rather than uh, that they believe in God themselves. that they And, you know, if you want to learn the truth about God, we suggest that you ask God. Just sit there and open your eyes and look up or look down and say, Dear God, I, I'm just a human being. I'm just a child. I'm just a whatever you are. And I don't know, but they say that you exist. And I've never seen you, but I would, if you exist, I'd like to know. And if the ideas, if there's any ideas that are being spun around about you that are true, I'd like to know what they are, humbly and sincerely. And you ask God to teach you the truth. Look, if there's a God, and you can't ask God to give to teach you God's truth, then what? Then then what do we have? We have nothing. But there is a God, and people have asked God to teach them God's truth. Abraham was one. His name was Abram. He became Abraham. Noah was another. Uh, uh, Adam was one. He was the first one. And Seth, his third son, that we have the record of. There may have been other sons, but that seems to be the first, the third son to replace the twins, Adam and uh, Cain and Abel, where Cain murdered Abel because Abel was righteous, believing in Mashiach and the Savior and the concept of the messianic hope. And Cain didn't believe that. He hated the idea because he was the older brother. And it may have seemed, even though they were twins, he was still older by a few minutes or a certain amount of time. And it seemed as if he was the one who was going to have to die to pay for the sins of, of, of Adam and Eve. And he didn't think that they had done anything so terribly wrong that anyone should deserve to go to hell for it. So he refused to put a blood sacrifice, which represented Jesus. The blood sacrifice that Abel gave was accepted by God because it spoke about Jesus. It was a type or an example of Jesus. The, uh, the, the uh, uh, sacrifice or offering that Cain brought was just fruit and vegetables and wheat. And that didn't please God because it showed that Cain didn't believe that he was sinful enough that some innocent being had to die to make it possible for him to be restored in fellowship to God. And, of course, Adam and Eve were separated from God at the time of the garden, but Cain and Abel were right there in God's presence. So what, Cain, what Adam and Eve did didn't apply to Cain and Abel until they made it apply to themselves. Cain, by being an unbeliever, proved he was wicked, because that's what wicked means in the Bible. Whenever you read the Bible and you see it talking about someone as wicked, 
The real rule of thumb is to realize that the persons who are writing the Bible, the authors of the Bible, the, the penners of the Bible, the thinkers that are, the, the narrators that are speaking the Bible, believe in this idea that every human being is sinful, I and mean, sinful means separated from God, and that they will do things wrong because of their being separated from God. In fact, it was their unbelief in, in Jesus that separated them from God. Jesus was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. His was called the Tree of Life. And as long as they were able to eat from that tree, they had life. And we're not teaching you anything new. We're teaching you what the Bible says and has said forever. If you just read it and ask God, God will show you what it means and you won't have to listen to me. But I'll tell you one thing difference between me and all the other preachers. I'm not a preacher, but I am a preacher. But I'll tell you, all the other preachers want you to pay them for uh, them telling you about God. And I don't want you to pay me. In fact, I would like to pay you. So you might want to consider my church, this church, our church, Jesus' church, the one that's been in existence around since the time of Adam. We've all believed in Jesus, those of us who believe in Jesus. And the rest of you don't believe in Jesus, you're unbelievers. And each of us had to come to a point in life, I did it when I was around 11, I believe, if I understand my history correctly, where we have to decide if we're going to be a, a believer or an unbeliever. We start out as unbelievers, unbelievers in the idea that we need Savior. And Jesus is the Savior. He saves us from going to hell. If you don't believe there's a hell, then you certainly don't need Jesus. And if you don't think you're going to hell, you don't need Jesus. And most people think they don't need Jesus, but everybody in the deepest part of their heart knows they need Jesus. And anyone who puts their mind to think about it and thinks about truth and what's going on will come to a close idea and understanding of Jesus. But the trouble is that the human heart, the Bible says, is full of wicked imaginations. That humans, from their wickedness of their heart, draw out imaginations, and they and and that's what they dwell on and live on and do on. And this happened because when Adam could, was freely eating from the tree of life, which is Jesus, and having his fellowship with God uh, through Jesus in the Garden of Eden, where God had created him and given him everything he needed and, and even a, a purpose, uh, something to do so he wouldn't be late, tired or bored. He had a fun hobby, and that was some type of gardening. Uh, and he had a lovely wife who loved him, and she he loved her, and and they were they were the close to the best married couple ever lived, except that uh, the devil was there, represented by the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they uh, went to that tree, and they Satan fooled them, tried to say, well, look, you can't worship God the way you're worshiping him. Why? There, he's keeping secrets from you and doesn't let you know the truth. But Jesus is the truth, and the tree of life is the truth, and Satan's a liar. And the name of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's a lie itself, because they, they didn't learn anything good from that tree. They just learned evil. They knew everything good already that was found in Jesus. And Jesus, years later, said, don't call any man good, because uh, only the Father in heaven is good. And he said that to a man, and everyone who's a Christian likes to use that as an example, but they then misunderstand the gospel. Because this lawyer came to Jesus and said, how can I get myself into heaven? And the answer is, if you know God and you know the truth, you know the answer is you can't get yourself into heaven. The only one who can get you into heaven is Jesus. So, and Jesus was standing there in front of him. He didn't come to him and say, the lawyer didn't say, Jesus, get me into heaven. Other people did in the scripture, read it and see. And he said, yes, today you'll be with me in paradise, or yes. All you need to do is ask God to put you in heaven and you'll be in heaven. But you've got to want the things of heaven. You've got to love the things that God loves. The only way that's going to happen is for your heart to be changed by God. In order for God to change your heart, you've got to open it up to him and offer it to him. He's given you dominion over your heart. God doesn't have dominion over your life. You have dominion over your own life, but you, your ancestor Adam gave dominion to Satan, and he has the dominion now. 
He has the dominion over your life, and you were separated from God. Adam and Eve were separated from God by angels with flaming swords. Well, you read that in the Bible, and you think these are godly angels, and they might be godly angels. I could be wrong, but they're not godly angels. They're demons. They're fallen angels. That's why they have fire in their hands, and that's why they're separating uh, Adam and Eve from God. Because the Adam and Eve were separated from God, and they couldn't have anything to do with God, and God couldn't have anything to do with them because they were trying to fellowship with God through Satan instead of doing it through Jesus. And then because of them eating from that tree, which they didn't do anything immoral, they didn't do anything terrible, horrible, but they stopped believing in Jesus as their Messiah, and they started believing in Satan as the way to get to God. And from that, you got all the world religions and science and all these other things, knowledge of everything, and everybody's using it to try and get rich off of you, making a fool out of you, telling you that they can help you understand things better than you can understand them yourself. And they're no better than you are. They're no smarter than you are. God doesn't love them more than God loves you. And most of them don't know what they know from God. They just got it from other humans. But if you want to, you can just go to God and say, God, teach me the truth. Yeah, I suppose you could go there and demand the truth from God and God will comply. But it would be a lot wiser to go with humility and sincerity and say, God, I'm a sinner and I'm a liar. I'm separated from you. I can't see you, God. Instead of the lies that most people say, well, I can see God in you. Well, you can't see God in me because I'm a liar and God is not a liar. And if you say you're not a liar, then you make God a liar because God says you are a liar. That's from John. So, you know, do what you want, but God doesn't send people to hell. People refuse to receive the grace of God from God. We resist the grace of God. And we uh, are unbelievers in the idea of the messianic hope, the idea that, that this innocent being, Jesus is his name, is going to die to make a way for you to go to heaven when you don't deserve to go to heaven. You never have deserved, you never will. But Jesus deserves to go to heaven, and he died instead. And he rose from the dead, but when he died, he died alone. Even God deserted him. He was the only being who ever lived or existed who was completely alone when he was hanging on that cross. But he wasn't completely alone because all of the sins of the whole world, all the wrongful doings, and, and the fact that human beings were separated from God rested upon him. And, and you can see the world and with Jesus on the cross holding the world up from his back while he's hanging on the cross. What he's really doing is holding up the whole creation uh, by, holding, by being on the cross. And he thought of you, he thought of each and everything that was ever created, he thought of every rock and tree, and atom and molecule and anything that we can see, Jesus considered it while he hung on that cross. And we were the ones who crucified him. We're the ones who ripped his beard out of his face and didn't believe in him. And he said, Father, forgive them because they don't understand what they're doing. But the two people dying next to him on the cross make it clear that one of them went to hell and the other one went to heaven. What was the difference? The one of them mocked Jesus and, resi and refused, resisted the grace of God. And the other one said to the other thief, what's wrong with you, man? Don't you understand? We're up here because we did something wrong. But this man, Jesus, he hasn't done anything wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me in paradise. Now, how in the world did this man dying on the cross suddenly understand something that the theologians tell us no one understood until years later when it was explained to them? That's not true. The people who were following Jesus, the very first Jews that followed him, were following John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. John the Baptist wasn't some poor slob who lived out in the woods. He was one of, if not the wealthiest man, lived on the earth at that time. He had the right to be that, but maybe his money had been stolen from him, but no, it hadn't. His family, his father was the high priest. His family owned the temple. It was made out of solid gold. They were wealthier than Caesar. And uh, John the Baptist was the most famous Jew on the earth because uh, Herod wasn't a Jew. He was an Imodian. He was a fake king. He wasn't the real king of Israel. He was Satan's king of Israel because he was a liar, and that's why the, the Herod the Great tried to kill all the babies because uh, Satan told him, yo, don't let them get in charge. Don't let Jesus survive. 
He has to die. But Jesus wasn't going to die by being stabbed with a sword. He was going to die on a cross, hanging on a cross. The most horrible death you could possibly have. Why? Because he loved his father and he loved you and me. And the father wanted us to be able to have fellowship with the father through Jesus. And Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice. This happened maybe before the beginning of time, uh, but, or maybe after the angels were created and before humans were created. But it, it probably is spoken about in Revelation where there's a silence and there's a situation where God has a problem that God can't solve. And then the Lamb shows up and offers this, pro- this solution, which is Jesus dying on the cross. And that amazed God and it pleased God because there was a way for God to continue to have fellowship with human beings. Why did God create you? God created you so that God could have a beautiful time loving you and giving you a wonderful life and having you enjoy everything that God had for you and for everyone else. That's why God created you, so so you could be the recipient of God's love. And uh, that was what was happening in the Garden of Eden for a certain period of time. I know this. I know when Seth was born, uh, Adam was 130 years old. So it was a 130-year time from the time he was created until uh, Seth was born. I have a chart that shows that, and if you want one, you can get one. You can buy it, or you can send money for it. But it's one of the few things that I, I would like to try and get some money from because uh, I sat down with the Bible when I was a young boy, and I went through it, and I made this chart to show the relationship between Adam and all of his descendants to, Mo- to going down to Moses, or to Joseph at least, and then Moses. And it, it, it sort of, if you, you read the begats in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11, and you don't get much out of them, but you turn them into this chart like God let me do, and you get an incredible education about the past. And you find out a lot of things that we think today are true because we were taught them by atheists, uh, uh, science, religion. So the evolution and science is the religion of atheists, people who don't believe in Jesus as their Savior and don't believe that there's a God who created the heavens and the earth. That's what it is. And this is not an atheist country. This is not a. This country is not supposed to be an atheist country like they pr- pretend. This is supposed to be a country where religion is neutral, a a country that takes no position on religion, not that there is a God or there isn't a God, not about what the God is like, but complete neutrality. And the government has no business running schools because the only thing that a school can do is indoctrinate you of propaganda about whether there is or isn't a God and how things came into existence. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole accomplishment of all the schools. And if you think that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, you're a big fool. You haven't looked at the information yourself. You haven't asked any probing questions. You haven't done even a little bit of homework because the idea that you came out of a rock instead of coming out of a created human being is ridiculous. And, and, and the whole theory behind evolution is just a bunch of atheist propaganda. Uh, and it's not based on any fact at all unless you just assume something is a fact that never was given as a fact. It was just assumed. And uh, in that way, science, modern science and ancient science is all an atheist religion. We know the truth about God and where we came from because God told us. And God told Adam and God told Adam what happened and Adam understood it. But Satan came in with lies and changed it to another story. Now, you have to decide whether you want to believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin to separ- and the separation that you have from God. And you're separated from the living God. You haven't seen God. And you, if you felt God in your heart, you may have, but you probably resisted it. And God is always getting, sending God's love to you. God is always loving you. 24 hours a day. Of course, God doesn't have any time, so there's no time in God. God's love all came forth once and exists, and it's there in present for everyone to uh, benefit from if they choose to do so. The person who decides whether you go to heaven or hell is not God, 
but you. You will decide. You'll either be a believer in Yeshua, in God who saves us, the Savior, Jesus the Savior, or you'll be an unbeliever. And if you're an unbeliever, God is wishes you would change and wants you to change. And Satan doesn't want you to change. So if you start to hear what I'm saying and if you feel the Holy Spirit touching your heart, which I'm saking this in a rough way so that maybe you won't even, I'm not trying to tear jerk you and do this and that and the other. Look, either you want to go to heaven or you don't. And if you don't want to go to heaven, God isn't going to insist that you go there. And if you think that God is, then you don't understand God. So you better open your heart and your mind and you better get the Bible out and read it one time through. Read the Bible. It only takes 70 hours. And is it wrong? Well, if it's wrong, it's the best wrong thing that exists on the face of the earth. If you compare what evolution teaches and Stephen Hawkins, who just died and went to hell, he just went right straight into hell. He, or maybe he went up a tunnel towards the light like a lot of people say they do when they die. But I'll tell you, if you die temporarily and you come back and you think you were going up a, a tunnel towards the light, I think, from my understanding of the Bible and God, that that means that you're on your way to hell. Because that you're going up a tunnel towards the light, you're going up to be judged. And you're going to be judged. And when you get to be judged, you're going to fail. Because you to not go to hell, you have to do something. You have to judge yourself as being a liar and a thief and a, and a wicked person because you don't believe in Jesus. And then you have to admit that if you had been there when Jesus was dying, you would have helped kill him. You wouldn't have protected him or defended him like you think you would out of your little self-righteousness that you own. But now look, it's very simple. Jesus, God, loves you. And all you got to do is love God back. That's all God wants you to do. And let God take care of you in every way, shape, and form that God can do it. God will take care of you. But if you want to take care of yourself, or you want to let Satan be the way you fellowship with God, God will let you do that, but God won't participate in it. So you'll be doing it alone by yourself with Satan, and you'll be miserable. Satan is a mean, awful, wicked God. How do you know that? Look at your life. What's been happening in your life? Well, who's your God? Is it Jesus? Is it Elohim? Well, what do you do with Elohim? What do you do with Jesus? Look, Rabbi Littleman, I call him, that was Rabbi Paul in the Bible, explained something to us. What he explained to us is that we can't do the law of God. You, we human beings are not capable of obeying God's law. So why did God give us a law? So we could read it and be aware of it and realize that we can't do it. Now, if you realize you can't follow God's law, then you have one of two things you have to do. Like most people, you say, well, it must be wrong, and it must be all wrong, and you follow some other idea. That's what most humans do. And then they all have these, these, it's really a Hindu religion. Most people in the West, Jews, Catholics, Protestants, most of us have this Hindu religion that we believe. And it, 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 all these things, revolution, uh, psychology, medicine, uh, they're all evil. They're all based on lies. Your medicine in the West is so stupid. Which doctors are better at, at healing people than medical doctors are? And which doctors admit they worship Satan and that Satan gives them the power to heal? I know because I have two friends who are witch doctors. And they were also cannibals. Now, you don't have any friends who are cannibals. You don't even think there is such a thing as a cannibal. And yet they are cannibals on the earth today eating other human beings. And I'll tell you what they do. They use pot to worship God, and they have abortions. They kill people and eat them. Listen, you don't want to go with the devil. Go with God. Uh, it's a very simple thing. Don't listen to me. I'm an idiot, but God's not an idiot. I'm a liar, but God's not a liar. I love myself more than I love you. No matter what I say, that's the truth. Except for the fact that when I was 11, I read that book once and I didn't understand it. And I asked God to explain it to me. And I read it a second time. And when I got to John 1, 12, first, uh, the Gospel of John, first chapter, the 12th verse, 
I suddenly began to understand what it was talking about. And I went back and reread that chapter until I understood and I started to cry because I realized that all I had to do in order to go to heaven was to receive Jesus as my Savior. And by doing that, I would receive the right to be a child of God. I had thought I was a child of God before that because that's what they told us in Sunday school and in, uh, in synagogue. But it's not true. We are not children of God. We're children of Satan. We, 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 Adam gave dominion of the earth over to Satan, and he gave himself to Satan, and he worshipped Satan, and he adored Satan, and he tried to have a relationship with God through Satan. That's what he did. And then there had to be a death. That's why he had to die, not so he could die, but so that Jesus could be born and Jesus could die. Jesus' death took place before the earth was created from God and Jesus' point of view. The first thing that happened was Jesus and God agreed that the solution to sin that would come would be for Jesus to die and then say while he's dying, having been deserted by God, say, God, forgive these people for what they're doing to me because they don't understand. And yet they had to do that. They had, they had to kill their brother. They had to use the Roman Empire to kill their brother. But the soldiers that were killing Jesus, most likely, most of them were Jews who were conscripted and working for the Romans. There might have been one guy there who raps, actually represented Rome. It might have been the guy who pierced him in the side and then humbly admitted that this was probably God the way he said he was. But uh, maybe he didn't understand that completely. Maybe he did. But we don't need to understand all these things. The Bible is a book that was not written by men. Don't believe the lies you were told by Satan and by theologians and by people who took money from you to tell you about God. And they were going to get rich and famous and important. And then they were self-righteousness. That's not God. God is not self-righteousness. God is a kind of love that you barely understand. It's called agape. And agape means that, that God's love doesn't insist on its own way. If you insist on not loving God and having Satan as your God, God will not insist that you repent of that and leave it up. What, what God wants us to repent of is our unbelief in the Mashiach. God was very pleased when, he, when Jesus died on the cross because that made it possible for God to be reunited to human beings. And the word sin means to be separated from, from God. And the word holy means to be, sin means to be separated from God, separated away to Satan. So you're attached to Satan. And holy means to be separated back from Satan to God. That's what they mean. Holy and sin mean the same thing. They're not talking about what you do or don't do, but they're talking about the, the essence of your being as it is considered by God to be. And if you are separated from God, God did the one thing that solved that problem. He asked for help, and Jesus said, I'll die, and that'll be the help. And God said, great idea, i go for that. And God isn't going to change his mind about that. This is from the beginning, from eternity. And the Bible is a book that describes who Jesus is. If you read the whole Bible and you look for it from the point of view of the Mashiach, the, the Savior, you will understand it. Otherwise, it will not make sense. Read the Bible and ask God to explain it to you. Open your heart and your mind. Join our church. Uh, the way you get a hold of us is poorfortrump at gmail.com because you'll get a response. And then you send in register to volunteer at gmail.com or let's end yours at gmail.com and you get contacts. Otherwise, put those in as YouTube. Put them into WordPress. Contact us and we will be in contact with you. And look, God loves you. Your love is meaningless to God. It's human love, and it's selfish, and it's self-centered, and it's greedy. You think it's pure, but it's not. But God's love is pure, and what God wants us human beings to do is to empty ourselves of self and selfishness and open our hearts and let God's love come into us and through us and be vessels of God's love. You'll know you have God's love working through you when you realize what salvation is and you understand it, and you humble yourself in front of God and you say, thank you for saving me. And you realize there's nothing reason that you did anything that makes you qualified to go to heaven, but the right to go to heaven is a free gift from God, and so is God's righteousness. It's given through Jesus. If you want to enjoy it, you fellowship with Jesus. Now we're getting ready to cut this down, try to keep it under 30 minutes, 
Uh, please contact us. Look at our other videos and our other channels, and we love you in Jesus' name. Dear God, please teach me your truth. And please, God, please bring this person to us so we can know who they are. And if you become a full participant in this church, we will pay you money. We don't charge. I'm poorer than you are, but I will give you money to show you how much God loves you. I will do that for you. Goodbye. Thank you. Poorfortrump at gmail.com.